Welcome SOCAP community to what is going to be a riveting fireside chat. My name is Taj James. I'm the co-founder of Full Spectrum Capital Partners. And for 20 years, I was the director of an organization called the Music Strategy Center. And through that work, I uh, had the opportunity to, to get to know um, the two amazing people who you're about to engage in, in conversation, um, Regan Pritzker and Kat Taylor. And if you know uh, Regan and Kat, what you know is they're two of the most important uh, leaders and innovators in philanthropy and impact investing um, for Kat and banking and financial innovation and banking. And so um, we're gonna have a really rich, rich, rich conversation. Um, Regan's the co-founder of the Catelli Foundation. Um, and serves as a board member there and, and a collaborator with the Restorative Economies Fund where one of my dear friends, mentors and close colleagues, uh, Nalaka Agbo just became the, C the CEO of that effort. Um, so just really excited about the work that Regan and the team are doing there. Um, and Regan's been working in philanthropy for, for a while with, through the Lieber Foundation with her with her family since 2015, where she's currently the board president and co-chair of the investment committee. And, leader, and Regan's been a real leader within the overall just transition movement, um, taking leadership from communities from, to, to, to move progressive wealth holders and philanthropists to, to sort of rethink their eth ethical framework for private uh, investment. Um, and Regan works with her family and advisors at Libra um, to move assets uh, in alignment with real progressive radical values in investment and philanthropy and political giving. Um, she's energized by the, the movement that's building to shift private investment and philanthropy towards the frame of economic justice. Um, Regan's also an educator uh, and brings the, the wisdom of the educators to, uh, to all of us working in the, in the capital space. Um, and there's so many lessons there. Um, we have to learn from Regan, which you're, you're about to hear. But thank you, Regan, for, for agreeing to come and be a part of this conversation with Kat. Um, so turning to Kat, uh, if you haven't read her recent profile in Forbes, I recommend that you do, um, because uh, what you'll see there is, is uh, Kat has been a leader and an innovator in uh, service of restoring social justice and environmental well-being for, for decades. and. Um, She's active in a variety of social enterprises and philanthropic in, uh, endeavors. Uh, in particular, she serves as the co-founder and board chair of Benish Bishop Strength Bank, a community development um, CDFI, which is a certified B Corps. Uh, and, and through that work, works with others in, in community lending to try to, to, to shift, shift capital towards community wealth. Um, she's also the founding director of Tomcat Rat Ranch Educational Foundation, um, which is really working to build a sustainable food system and working in particular with uh, folks who, who haven't had access to the capital and resources to, to really bring justice to, to our food system. Um, and so I've, I've had the chance to work with Kat as a part of a broader equitable, equitable development working group. And we've been doing an interesting webinar series, which we'll share some information about in the chat, where we've been exploring some of these questions that, that Megan and Kat are going to dig into um, uh, in relationship to the question of, of what it's going to take for everybody to be able to access the good life um, as, our, as our partners in the Global South and the Just Transition Movement call it um, the Buen Vivir. And what, what Regan and Kat um, both have recognized is that, um, that access to capital is key, key to that shift. And they're going to share some of their experiences and stories uh, about what they're learning, what they're experimenting with, and what they really want to call the SOCAP community into to be in partnership in this journey with to really figure out what we need to do to, to build real community wealth. So I'm going to turn it over to Regan and Kat. And um, I guess we'll start with Kat. And I think the, the beginning question for both of you is to just share a little bit of your journey. Sort of how did you get um, from where you started to where you are? Um, and what and what does this, this this the SOCAP community need to know about about um, about your journey? So we'll start with Kat. Thanks, Taj. And I feel very humbled to be a part of this conversation, and really grateful to Regan for agreeing to do this. I think both of us uh, are on journeys that are about experimentation, 
and guidance. Uh, and I'm really just putting myself out here today, not to say that I've done everything right or I have all the right answers, but just um, to show you a little bit of what I've tried to do. Um, and I want to begin by centering this moment uh, in the movement for Black Lives and in respect of the long standing, longest standing peoples of the world uh, and the BIPOC community stewards to whom, and this is the theme of my comments, we need to give stuff back. Assets, wealth, land, control, ownership, et cetera. So my story begins at the age of five, uh, which is my earliest memory of the, what I call the civil rights funerals, the rapid succession of um, assassinations of JFK, Bobby Kennedy, Martin Luther King Jr., Malcolm X, and realizing at an early age that something was seriously wrong in the origins of our country. And of course, over a lifetime, realizing that was African enslavement, Jim Crow, mass incarceration, gen native genocide, land theft, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera, persecution of refugees and immigrants. Um, and really a theme throughout has been the re-education of Cat Taylor, because we don't learn our history right in this country yet. And I'm still learning, still reading white fragility, decolonizing wealth, race matters, et cetera. And I don't suspect I will be done learning uh, until I take my last breath. Um, but along the way, I have also uh, tried to experiment in various sources of capital. Um, originally, probably uh, looking at banking because the socially responsible banks, South Shore Bank, Ramin, Self Help Credit Union, grew up at the time that I was going to high school and college and graduate school. And I was deeply interested in seeing how access to loan capital could rebuild wealth in uh, the communities that have been hurt the worst. Um, I also spent a lot of time on nonprofit boards, did a lot of philanthropy in a very passive way um, until uh, the early 2000s when Tom Steyer and I reassessed how we were showing up in service to the great civil, human, and environmental justice causes of the world uh, and decided we weren't doing nearly enough. So we decided to focus on good food, good money, good energy, and establish organizations and companies at the heart of those very important and overlapping sectors in order to gain the insights of actual actors in those systems. So there grew up Beneficial State Bank, Radical Impact Partners, Bright Path Capital Partners, at the heart of good money, Tomcat Ranch Educational Foundation and Ranch at the heart of good food, and numerous political organizations that Tom started, including Next Gen America, Need to Impeach, and ultimately a presidential campaign. Um, and we did learn a lot. We really did learn a lot. But if you think about it by definition, all of those organizations were white led because we started them and operated them for some time. So that experience, which is ongoing, led me to think about how do we shift not just loan and uh, philanthropic capital, but equity capital through venture, through private equity, but also by simply giving it back, making equity grants, pledging donor advice fund assets in support of bond financings. How can we get that capital back to the communities from whom it was stolen uh, and give them the control and community ownership and stewardship and engagement that they so richly deserve. So I am involved in philanthropic reform. I think we have to pull all the levers at once, but I'm gonna uh, make a call in at the end of this today about ways I think the SOCAP community can be part of shifting assets back to the communities who deserve them. Thanks. Thanks so much, Kat. Regan, you want to share some of your story? Well, first, I have to give a huge uh, shout out to Kat. Um, when I first learned about Beneficial State Bank, I, I was really inspired by that, that intention of creating a community facing bank. And it wasn't until you gave your intro that I remembered that um, my mom set up my first savings account at South Shore, at Shore Bank, because I grew up in <laughs> the south side of Chicago where that was started. Um, so I guess my impact investing started when I first got allowance when I was about the same age that you described, Kat, about five in the 70s. 
Um, but I came back to it many years later after spending time working in education, raising three kids. You saw one of my teenagers walk behind me earlier. Um, and uh, when my parents started the Libra Foundation, it was kind of a reckoning for me because I had grown up really immersed in wealth privilege, but um, not really recognizing it as such. It, it wasn't um, centered in my family. We, we, were, we were about community and about relationships and about being good people to each other and to our friends and, you know, just what I think of as like just good family values. But um, I don't think I even totally realized the access I had um, until much later in my life. And um, when my parents started the Libra Foundation um, in 2005, uh, they my parents really called me and my siblings into a conversation about how do we represent our values in philanthropy. And, and I, I was actually really reticent and, and didn't want to be defined as a wealth holder, didn't want to be defined as a donor, um, felt like philanthropy was for, um, you know, I, I didn't see myself reflected in my concept of philanthropy. Um, and so it took me a while to find a place there, but we were focused on human rights and, um, and uh, I found myself increasingly inspired by the grantees we were funding and the opportunity to go to learning spaces. Um, and over a period of time, um, got interested in this idea of the responsibility that I had as a steward of this wealth, whether I liked it or not, and started to be increasingly inspired by um, being exposed to, first of all, a more explicit analysis of the past that Kat was talking about in terms of where wealth comes from and the, um, the history of genocide and the invention of whiteness to justify racial capitalism. And um, as a result, wanted to think about, well, how are we investing this money that is in an, an endowed uh, foundation? And, and the more I looked into investing well or investing for human rights or investing for social justice, uh, the more I found how impossible that seemed. And, um, and that the very structure of our current financial system is designed to be extractive and exploitative. And, and it doesn't have to be that way, but that's the way it's operating right now. Um, and so as I hit different milestones in my journey, um, I've been trying to, as Kat said, like keep learning, keep pushing myself to make bigger plays, to take uh, agency, to step into the power that I have, use it responsibly to push the field of philanthropy forward and ultimately transform the systems of our economy because you can't separate out um, environmental health and wellness um, from, um, you know, wins you want to make in terms of gender equity or um, or incarceration without looking more holistically at the systems that that are um, that we're working inside of. Um, so in 2018, um, I learned that I was going to be inheriting a significant amount of money, and my husband and I had already been talking about making a really intentional. Um, experiment around uh, redistributing wealth and I had originally as decided I was going to give away $10 million in a way that was working in partnership with movement leadership and to move that capital, not into an endowment that would drip drab little bits to communities, but that would really like transfer it completely into either community governed projects or land ownership or, um, or other forms of like regenerative projects that could then help build wealth, power and cultural wellness in communities. Um, and that, at the same time that I'd made that decision, I found out that I was going to be inheriting $445 million. And so we made the commitment to give that money away. We're doing it through a foundation structure, but um, we think of it as a transitional um, container for that project and have really been trying to experiment with different ways to um, move decision making to different, um, you know, to communities that are closer to the issues we're trying to, to address. And, in, and then to keep my role as a trustee for now um, and a founder of this project to really be about talking to this community, to my peer community of funders and investors about really rethinking the ethical framework and the, and the um, risk assessments that we do to really think about if we want to move and live into a world of justice and peace and equity, then we can't play by the same rules where we're always expecting 
um, you know, other people to take on the risk or other people to um, accumulate uh, income generation and, and um, you know, wins that are going to accrue back to us as the wealth uh, holders or the investors. So um, that was, I said a lot all at once and um, I, uh, I'll, I'll stop there and wait for some more direction from my fireside compatriots. Yeah, one of the things I really appreciate about both of you is is the way that you listen and the way that you build relationships. And as I've had a chance to see both of you, your work evolve, it's very much informed by the the, the community leaders, the movement leaders, the, the organizations that are leading the work forward. And you both sort of take your direction in many ways from, from the partners that you're you're building relationship with. So you know, I thought it'd be interesting to just hear from each of you, like, who are some of the people, what are some of the places that have kind of like inspired you, continue to inspire you, help to move you forward? Um, those of you who watched the, the lightning talk yesterday with uh, Doria from Urban Tilth and Cooperation Richmond and the Climate Justice Alliance, you got a chance to hear from Doria, how she's moving some of this work forward and Kat and Regan, both of you have been supporting that work in Richmond in different ways over the years. And um, some of you may have heard from Anasa about the work she's doing in Memphis, but they're, you know, uh, Harold and Spartansburg, they're, they're a set of leaders in communities who've really formed and shaped how you approach your work. So we'd love for you to share a little about who some of the people are and how you build those relationships and why you think doing the work in that way is so critical, like through those relationships, yeah. Um, Regan, you can maybe you can start this time since Kat jumped off the last one. Thanks, Taj. Yeah, this is a, such a rich um, and and emotional topic for me because I really feel um, I've been given an incredible privilege to be in relationship with um, with our grantees, with the folks that we're rolling with, um, and and it's an ongoing process. I think you know building a relationship is um, is a is a is a ongoing process. It's not like you check the box, like, okay, I have accumulated a relationship, I'm done. It's like, how do you work through problems? How do you lean into conflict? How do you represent, um, you know, the needs and interests of others when there's conflicts or confusion? And um, so it's, it's, it's a place of a lot of um, vulnerability and a need to build trust. And that's an ongoing thing, especially as a white person, as a person who grew up with wealth privilege. Um, to, to know how to navigate those spaces. Um, I, in particular, um, was in for, you know, educated and, and um, you know, got a lot of my, my kind of worldview framing thanks to um, Movement Generation and Doria and Urban Tilth and Cooperation Richmond are very connected to that, to that work. Um, and uh, just the basic framing around just transition and thinking about how connected the systems of extraction and exploitation are, and therefore we need an interconnected solution that also looks at a regenerative, restorative, caring economy that's based on relationship and um, and trust and and deep democracy. Um, so uh, yeah, I think the that extended network includes also Boston Ujima project. It includes. Um, uh, Climate Justice Alliance, as you mentioned, and um, and so many other partners. Um, so that's been a really important place for my education. And then, yeah, um, you know, it, I think um, looking at the Katali.org website is a good place to start. And just look at we've you know we just launched that website. We're really excited about it. And um, the Restorative Economies Fund, which, as Taj mentioned. Um, really represents the work of our CEO, Amaka Agbo. Um, we're uh, happy to be able to highlight there all the grants we've made. You can really see some of the um, complexity and interconnectedness between that work, ranging from um, the folks we've mentioned and also projects like Restore Oakland. And um, I hate naming things because then I know I'm leaving things out, but I'll, I'll pause there. <laughs> um. Um. So I'm going to be lucky and get to follow in with any support I can provide uh, for Doria and Urban Tilth and Cooperative Richmond, and I'm very excited about that. Um, I, I, too, have formed relationships that are critical to my own personal development and, and professional aims through the work. 
I actually grew up pretty segregated as a white middle class girl in California. Um, and even, you know, the elite schools that I went to were not sufficiently exposing me to the stories of all the communities that I cared so much about. So it's been a, just a treasure to me to get to meet people along the way. And some of those, including Doria, uh, are Harold Mitchell in Spartanburg, South Carolina, who I met through the presidential campaign. Turns out um, that's an interesting way to meet a lot of people too. Uh, and Spartanburg is an incredible story, the Regenesis Project from whom we took our name in the Regenesis community of practice that parlayed a egregious environmental assault on a black, brown and white community and a $20,000 EPA grant into $300 million of investment into community ownership, engagement and wealth. Um, and they're still on that journey um, um, about to lay in a hydroponic facility where formerly a fertilizer plant poisoned everybody. Um, also working with uh, Anasa Troutman now in Clyburn Temple and following Regan there as well, hoping to lend support as they develop their community wealth building strategies and implementation. Um, Allensworth, California, the first black community in California started by Colonel Allensworth, intended to be the Tuskegee of the West, beautiful, uh, self-fulfilling vision, uh, a vibrant um, Black community built on mutual self-aid um, and self-determination, uh, then attacked by white supremacists and uh, our economic system um, to be torn down. Now in rebuild mode with the leadership, uh, the next generation of leadership in Allensworth, um, centering their redevelopment on regenerative agriculture. Of, um, that is Denise and, um, and Coyote Cadera and Dennis Hudson. And then Felicia Gaston in Marin City, who has been running youth leadership development programs for almost 30 years, um, thinking about COVID response and get out the vote and census and everything else. And we're working on a Black History Project for the West uh, to make sure that we reveal the stories of Allensworth and Marin City and Port Chicago, uh, Vanport and Portland. Um, uh, and then finally, and these, I, I agree with Regan, it's dangerous to start naming communities and people because I may be leaving somebody out, but I cannot um, uh, not also speak about Catherine Flowers, who just received a MacArthur Genius Award for her incredible activism around the right to clean water and uh, uh, sanitation systems in Lowndes County, Alabama, which is the birthplace of the Black Panther movement and of course, a, a very historic civil rights um, location. And all of these communities have come together to share best practice um, and to, uh, to me, to provide inspiration, to change the way that we're making resource shifts um, certainly we're going to continue making grants, particularly those that allow communities to develop their capital absorption ability, but we intend to shift assets so that those communities um, can hold their land in communal ownership, can uh, develop their business base with their own equity, uh, not with outside investment, um, and so that uh, they can build thriving communities for the good life, not just surviving communities um, as we've seen in the past. Beautiful, beautiful. I want to give you both an opportunity to say a little bit more about that for folks who are who are curious and inspired to understand what it really means to to shift assets and resources in the ways that you're that you're talking about. Um, how, um, in addition to sort of just going onto the Catelli website, the groups are there. Deliver them resources. It's simple. <laughs> it's it's there. There's a, there's a pathway laid out, and the groups that Kat mentioned as well. So that there's always that. But just just curious if if there's more you can say about um, any challenge you want to sort of put out to the SoCap community in terms of how how this community thinks about the question of investment. Because Regan, you sort of early on described your experience of kind of challenging this notion of investment, um, and there's some aspects of that that can be really problematic. Um, yeah. in, terms of, in terms of the impact. So both of you are talking about a different approach and I just wanna, wanna give you a chance to say a little bit more about any invitation you wanna, you wanna put out into this community in terms of how they can also start thinking about this work a little differently and approaching it differently. 
Yeah, well, I think the the idea of using the tools of finance to to um, empower other communities and moving the um, assets and the ownership into those communities rather than assuming that the people who currently hold resources and um, and and have you know fiduciary responsibility don't confuse your fiduciary responsibility with an inability to move resources permanently into the hands of others. It is also your, especially if you're in a philanthropic setting, it's your duty to stay close to mission and the, the, the tides are shifting, the time is now. Um, you have permission to give that money away. You do not need to have a perpetual endowment. You do not need to give away 5%. You can think bigger, you can do more. On the investment side, I really think we need to start thinking of ourselves as allies for social change and movement. Um, evolution and not as gatekeepers or, um, you know, people who need to hold on to that power. So, so it's a mindset shift. Uh, and I just challenge people to really think about what is the role you have to play in, in pushing a more transformative agenda that breaks us out of the internalized um, cultures and expectations that maintain the status quo. Um. Couldn't agree more. And um, I think the challenge that I want to put out there is the one that I'm going to try to achieve myself. And it's um, multiple challenges. So uh, we did, Tom and I took the giving pledge, which is a commitment to give half your resources away during your life. But honestly, it needs to be more than that. And I'd like to hopefully, uh, given the assets under my control, shift a third of them to community ownership, not um, so that those communities who know the, the best of how to heal and solve for the hurt that's been laid off on them the worst, have the power to do that. Uh, I, one of the ways that I intend to do that is I have made um, a commitment of $100,000 to the communities that I spoke of, plus one more, the Friendship House New Village, um, based on self-healing in the Mission District of San Francisco, uh, Peter Bratt, the community steward, who I is a, count as a dear friend and a longtime colleague um, in the leadership role there with among others. Um, so to use them as an example, I'm committed to giving $100,000 for their pre-development and capital absorption strategies to get the project ready to take over a block in the mission, building uh, treatment centers, uh, tribal spaces, um, uh, support services, and so on, in coalition with black and brown communities throughout the mission. And then to follow on the pledging of a million dollars of DAF assets to a municipal, excuse me, a nonprofit bond financing so that we can leverage uh, that money into four or five times that am amount of low cost capital. I'm gonna do that with five communities total, um, including certainly Urban Tilth, Cooperative Richmond and uh, Anasa and Cliver and Temple efforts, but likely two more beyond that. And I'm calling out in this moment in time that I would love for four more donors to join me in that strategy of a $100,000 grant for capital absorption purposes and a million dollar pledge of a DAF asset uh, over a 10 year period to back um, that kind of access to low cost capital, which all wealthy people already have. So we're just opening up finance markets uh, in a more egalitarian way. Um, I'll, I'm very busy uh, with leadership, mostly black in financial innovation. Uh, I think Regan's absolutely right that uh, capitalism is part of the problem. If we don't change it, it's going to kill us all. Um, and we need to take back financial instruments to be public purpose in nature and community benefiting and outcome. Um, uh, I also um, uh, would like to um, be a part of policy moves uh, to make it more possible for us to reenact longstanding business models and new ones uh, so that we can get to new definitions of property rights, like land should be owned communally and kept in the hands of those who steward it properly. Like the big natural monopolies of the world, the Netflix, YouTube, Google, everything should be owned by platform cooperatives where each of us who shop, share, query, 
uh, create content, earn a tiny micro equity share so that when everybody owns a little bit of everything and nobody owns too much of everything, anything, we thrive. So I intend to be very busy on the policy uh, and innovation front as well in allyship with black and brown communities who stand to benefit from changing these massive systems. There, there you go, SoCal community. Um, there's the call. I'm gonna, I'm gonna close us with two from words of wisdom from, from colleague and mentor, uh, Amaka Agbo, who, who leads the Catelli Foundation. Um, and she's, she's, she's charged us with two things, disaggregating capital from capitalism, which is what both, you, both of you are describing, all the ways we need to do that. Um, and Amaka shared today just how clear it is that wealth is not something that's meant to be accumulated, but something meant to be shared. The sharing feels good and, and regenerated across communities and generations. So um, just had to bring in more of Amaka's wisdom into this in support of all of us, because we never do that too, too often or too much. And just to appreciate both of you for for coming into this conversation, this fireside chat, and really challenging this community to really um, put new and different people in charge of, of capital resources in ways that repair the harm that needs to be repaired and helps us to build the good life and the Buen Vivir for all. So thank you both. Any, any oh, last comments for over time, but any last thoughts before we close? Just appreciate this conversation. And it's very weird to not have an audience all will be on chat. So if people have things they want to ask, please do. And um, I live in San Francisco. I'm here. I'm not that hard to find. Happy to continue the conversation in other platforms. And let's all get together and launch a good life pledge and campaign. Beautiful. Thank you both.